So, uh, some of the people that are working on the Minion and Dow House, uh, the mod contract extensions, wanted to have a, a, a further workshop to discuss the bounties and to discuss how some of the tech kind of works. So that's what we'll be talking about here. Um, actually, let me invite over a few people real quick. Okay. All right, so um, I think Santiago and uh, Barada and let's see, oh, Dan, 13 Ram, had some different ideas on uh, some of these bounties. Um, so, you know, uh, where should we start? Like, I think there's a couple things to this. Like, it, it they can... The, the minion is kind of more of like uh, just an idea. I mean, we have the con the standard minion there. It could be built on in different ways if you see like different use cases. But the idea is uh, being able to run an arbitrary function from a passing proposal in the Moloch DAO. Um, the other side of this is the DAO house product where we could actually try to build some UI and interfaces into it. But I think the main thing we're really looking for is just like, some real good proofs of concept of how to do these things. One of them was uh, like DAO metadata that is controlled through DAO proposals. Now the, the, that one doesn't necessarily require the minion um, unless that solution requires doing something with uh, external contract. Um, if we are using like a store of data through uh, on something like IPFS or something, then we might not need to have a another contract call, but yeah. So I don't know, um, so, Dan. What are you thinking? Or, or so I think the the thing that would be really great is to go over like just walk through the minion code and show people how they can deploy minions and start using them or adding on to them, etc. So I think there's a bunch of people here who are excited about the idea but don't really know how to get started. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think there could be a few different ways to to deploy and get started. We have the DAO house uh, subgraphs and contracts um, all set up for Coven as well, so that's a good place to do some testing. Um, and so maybe I'll just walk through some of those things first. Um, Well, actually, let's see. We got started another repo last night called Moloch Contract Extensions. I um, actually was working with Barada, and we had we started seeing that there's like a lot of different kind of fun things to do uh, just as extensions off of Moloch. So this will be kind of like a library. If anyone ever has an idea of, of something like um, the minions in here now, uh, one called Transmutation, which is more of a, a proposal kind of extension, and Transvolution, uh, same kind of idea. So this, I think, we, we just want to kind of like create a library of all different kind of random ideas around Moloch and um, just let people kind of riff on them and learn from each other, try different experiments. Um, not necessarily anything that needs to be like crazy um, audits or, or uh, tests or, or whatever, just kind of like get all the ideas down and have a place for us to, to hash on it and going forward. So this is kind of a, a registry where you just put like what it is, what the file is, and what a description or use case is. Um, but if we come in here, um, you actually want to look at this is like the standard minion. Oh, by the way, on Discord, I'm not seeing your screen. I'm still seeing the Discord. Uh thing. So I don't know if everyone else can see it, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably my bad. Let me try again. Uh, 
Awesome. Okay. So again, Raid Guild, Moloch contract extensions. We have a README with just like this library of, of things. If you if you uh, have any interesting ideas, do a PR and we'll add them in. Um, so in here we've got the minion. And so I'll just go through and do a quick review of this. I, uh, I talked about it the other day too, but um, it could be useful. The basic idea is that uh, when you launch uh, the minion contract, you pass in the Moloch address. This kind of links them together. Uh, and then the, the main part here is that you submit a proposal. This is basically just a wrapper around the submit proposal function in the Moloch. Um, we're just adding a few things to it and then saving a little bit of data. So this uh, action data is the hex data that would be used to call some kind of um, arbitrary contract call. Uh, so we put an action two and an action data. We save those two things in a struct and then we submit the proposal. Um, we also then save the proposal idea ID that is returned from the Moloch when it's submitted. Then the proposal goes through its uh, uh, governance process uh, through the voting period and grace period and all that. Once it's finished, um, you can return to this contract and do uh, execute action. If the proposal passed, it runs the saved um, uh, the saved contract call that you had saved in in this initial step. So it's it's actually it's a pretty simple idea and. Um, it's just uh, it adds this extra kind of flexibility to the Moloch DAOs. And is the idea here um, with the structure of that that you have a proposal that has a bunch of data, and then one of the the, the parameters of that proposal is a um, a reference kind of proposal sent to the Moloch, so then the Moloch can say, "Hey, it points to this you know uh, minion proposal," and then the Moloch can vote on that. And then uh, once the Moloch has voted, it'll you know update what the result is, yay or nay. Uh, and then someone can go back to the minion and take that proposal blob and put it into the execute function. The execute function will check to see if the parameter where the Moloch votes yay or nay was approved or not. And then it'll either execute or not. Is that kind of correct? Yeah. Yep. If, uh, if it was a yay <laughs> vote, it'll execute. If it wasn't, then it'll fail. Cool. And um, Gabby, I don't know if you're on the call here or not, but I think this is kind of similar to the way the Aragon OS works, right? Where you'd have an intent to perform an action as a, as a member of a DAO, you click to do the thing, it kind of puts together the, the transaction, but it can't execute yet. And first it sends it out to the voting and says, do you approve yet or nay? And depending on that, then it'll go and get executed or, or not. It kind of seems like a similar pattern. I don't know if Gabby's with us, but anyways, kind of cool. Uh, cause it's like the same, same kind of general architecture, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. And it, it matches up with the, the agent, um, kind of use cases a lot. And, uh, um, so, I mean, this contract is, could be changed in a lot of ways too. Like, uh, the other day I was mentioning maybe conditional kind of logic. And w what I was thinking there was, uh, when you propose an action, you may put have a, a conditional per parameter where you pass another contract, and then that other contract has a, like a standard interface to that would have a function that returns true or false. So you could add any kind of logic in that contract. You could have it uh, talking to Chainlink oracles, or you could have it checking um, the parent Moloch or some other Moloch's balance, or you could have it checking a block number or whatever, as long as it returns true or false, and then um, it, it would just be another require statement that we would add in this this execute action. So instead of requiring that uh, just that the, the proposal is passed, uh, we also would require that this other contract returns true. Mm, I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's a bad idea, but it, it it's just like an idea of something that could happen. And we could add it to, 
um, this kind of model contract extensions library. Well, I think um, with that, that's something similar to um, what James and I were talking about before. So you could have like a, like the minion or whatever, and it says, hey, you know, there's these conditional logic steps. And one is it first goes to the, the parent Moloch and says, is this generally a good idea? And the parent Moloch could vote yay or nay. And be like, okay, cool. That's like the first step. And then uh, it's like, okay, well, then is there this other conditional logic that is, you know, uh, required? Maybe it's an external price. Maybe it's another sub DAO that has to vote on the thing, etc. And then once that secondary thing happens, which would be the real kind of deciding factor, then someone could execute. So then it would kind of have like uh, a multi-step decision process where one is to approve the idea in general and the other is to check that a specific thing happened for that idea to be valid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's some other kind of cool use cases like you could stage up uh, some different proposals. Like maybe you, you have an agreement with your DAO members that after one year, they invest into some other token or something. And so you could actually when you initially sign your operating agreement and you have these stipulations, you could actually stage up these, these uh, transactions. They would go through the vote so everyone knows and is aware and they vote on it. And then they actually couldn't be executed until you hit you know, the block number one year from now. And then, so it's like a vesting kind of contract. So there is kind of like a lot of kind of interesting things you could do. Um, yeah, that would be very, very cool, actually. Um, so I think like vesting stuff is a like thing that people have been talking about a lot in general and trying to figure out how to do it in an easy way. Um, and especially because a lot of like Moloch DAOs are grants and investments and stuff, right? So vesting is just a natural kind of standard part of that. Um, so yeah, I think that's great. Can you guys see my other browser now, or am I just sharing one browser? Uh, I see DAO House. Okay. I might show another one in a little bit if I'm going to do some, maybe bring up Remix or something. But so here's DAO House. This is on Covan. Covan.daohouse.club. Um, this is the uh, same as what's on Mainnet, just all the contracts up on Covan. So if you wanted to do some testing with Minion, we really don't have any. Um, Front end interfaces. Well, we do have one. We do have a front end interface for it, but not. As, I'll show you that in a little bit. It's not really connected to Dahas. Um, but if you do want to just like summon a test, uh, a test DAO where you can do some testing, um, instead of like picking one of these presets, just come into hard mode, I guess. And Vin or Sam, if, if anything seems wrong let me know um, make sure you're on version 2 and these are actually all editable fields um, these uh, kind of blank spots here so like our primary currency you would put in a token address so let's say um, Covan Weath I don't know the, I'll have to look it up Okay, so here's our Coven with contract, our primary currency at token address. Is this right? The screen seems a little wrong. Fun mode. Let's just try, let's see if, maybe that screen didn't get updated. Let's call this like super fast DAO. So we can do some like, if you want to actually on Covan and do some testing. Yeah, this seems a little better. Oh, but I can't change this. So if you had a special token, you'd have to go through that hard mode where the form seems like it might not be totally updated. Minimum cost, uh, this is not really important. Um, voting period, oh, and we can't change the voting period either. Okay, sorry guys. So we gotta go in this hard mode. Um, so put in your token, a period. So the way that the Moloch DAO works is there's this idea of periods, which is like your standard unit of time. 
Um, so if, if we did a period and one period lasts 200 seconds, then that's like, a, like five minutes about. Um, oh, you can change those in easy mode. Sorry. Well, the yeah, the currency. I think you can change the just weeth and die. I think is all that are exposed in the fun mode. Oh, but I can't change the, the period. Period. Yeah, you can. Oh, I can. Do you like period the... last seven days. Oh, then. Uh, yeah. Oh, the period length. Yeah. Right. It's only in days for the easy mode. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's the... Uh, if I wanted to do the fast style, then, okay, periods, 200 seconds per period. How many periods is a voting period? Um, like, how many standard root length periods is a voting period? I don't know. We can do, like... 10 minutes or something would be the two of those. And then our grace period, we could just do one. And our deposit, these form fields are a little short, so it's kind of hard to tell. But it looks like, I don't know, we just, we just don't need that much. So I'll just take out some of that. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so running on Covan, we're going to just go ahead and deploy this. This will give us a new Moloch address that we can play around with. And, um, so it may be just as easy to bring in the Moloch contract if you're more comfortable with that and deploy it yourself. Um, this will also, the nice thing about this is it also sets up like the voting interface. Am I still on? We lost your stream. Okay. <laughs> I got kicked. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's my super fast day all. Um, here's the interface. So one thing, one of the bounties was like the metadata for a DAO. Um, basically, like there's a little bit of metadata here, like the title and the description. These are just saved in a database right now. But what, what we would like to do is have much more rich metadata that can be controlled by the actual DAO community um, and through proposals. So there's a few ways that we could do that. It could just be um, maybe in this, uh, maybe it's a new proposal type, I'm thinking. So like we could have a link here for for uh, updating metadata or or something like that. And when you click on it, instead of taking you to the standard proposal form, it may take you to a form that is more um, update your title description, all these things. Uh, then, it, then it submits a proposal, though, just kind of leaving shares, requests, token tribute, and everything blank. And uh, but kind of what's happening there is the part that we'd like to explore a little. Like, if it requires any kind of contract interactions, like if we're using like a registry of DAOs and then like having a mapping of a DAO address and uh, IPFS hash or something, or would we even need that because maybe we could just save it in the proposal uh, when we submit it? And so it's just on chain that way. But then how do we link like the most recent metadata? Um, 
there was uh, someone brought up using IPFS and LP. Uh, what was that? Dan, are you on? Yeah, IPLD. Yeah. But we would still need to link the IPFS hash somehow. Uh, yeah. Okay, so like, um, we can't see it in this form, but in the Moloch contract, when you submit a proposal, there's a, a details field, and it's just a, a string field. We kind of use that now to save some of the metadata about the proposal, uh, like it's a, a JSON string that has a title and a short description and a link. We could add another, like, uh, would we be able to save an IPFS hash as a string in another field in there? That could be a possible way. But to display it, we'll have to go look through all the proposals and find the latest proposal and or something? Yeah, that's what, yeah, what do you, the latest past proposal, the latest proposal that passed, I guess? Yeah, of that type. Yeah, so what we might want to do is in this details field where we're adding title, short description, link, um, and you can, we're kind of doing this in the minion. We're at, we have this flag in here. We're like kind of putting together the same format for the minion. And then we have this flag here called is minion. And so the front ends can kind of key off of that and and know like what is set. So it may be something more about like adding like a type to this to this or um, yeah, so and then we would look for all the proposals of that type and get the most recent one that passed, and that would be their like voted on metadata that is like the current one and then we would be want to be able to query and display that going forward does that sound like something that would be doable yeah that, i think that that sounds doable should be possible all we need is to a way to update that metadata hash and and then you can just use that metadata hash to display all the metadata so if we update it through a proposal, save it in that proposal, then we know to access that that metadata as the most current going forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you say that it's possible to uh, loop through all, all the proposals and find the latest one of that type, then it should be straightforward. OK. We could set up a query through the graph to really quickly do that, too. Oh, yeah. That would be nice. Can you parse through the details field in the graph? No, we could do it in the mapping and then set a new field so that the graph had that field of, like, is a uh, metadata proposal. OK. Maybe. Let me... Um... Might be worth exploring. Yeah. He just disappeared, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Com completely lost in that time. Sorry, I fell off. Are you guys still here? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let me share this other browser of Remix. Um, let's see. Do I go to Mount YouTube? I don't know if you guys can see this, but mm -hmm. we have a the submit proposal here. So if we were going to submit the proposal, we would use this string 
details parameter. So we just want to probably set a kind of standard way to save data into that. Um, right now we're using that JSON string. Should we take some notes or or do you guys want to talk more about some minion stuff? And we can figure this out later. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can figure this out now if nobody else wants to talk about anything else. OK. OK, so let's see. Our, our current um, format I'm really bad at using Discord. <laughs> Can you guys see my HackMD now? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So Vin's already started some notes here. Um, so if we do like the format that we need. Um, so a JSON string. Currently, well, what do we have? We have title, um, description, Hmm. I'll share this later. Is it description or details? It's description. Okay, so then what we've been doing on the minion is adding that is minion flag, but I wonder if it might be a little more flexible just to do like a proposal type or something. And here you could add uh, metadata or minion or whatever else you want to do. Um, oh, we have a link field. Is there anything else we'd want to add for this, Dan? Like, uh, oh, the hash? Yeah, just one hash. Do we want to have, like, an address to where it's pinned, or, or do you think that's too much or anything like that? Yeah. I can get you address what? Should we save it in the proposal, you think? I guess like if we were putting it on pinata or something like that. I don't know. What's your opinion there? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think just the hash is fine. I think we can on the UI you can pull the data from anywhere. Like any yeah. IP is gateway. Okay. Anything else that we would would be good in here? I mean, I guess a logo could be a good test for an image. Right. And so the images would probably be in this data store as another hash, right? Yeah, I'm thinking it will be inside the IPFS hash as one of the hashes, one of the IPLD uh, values. Okay, so this is pretty good. It's not too heavy. Um, so the DAO metadata, we've got 
he's got this set up here. So the avatar would be another hash, right? Yeah, and then another high paper hash. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a kind of a theme one. Oh, there, oh so that may be what we want to have. Um, like, uh, this will be like a theme hash, which should be another. Uh, yeah, do we want one high level IPFS hash which has both the DAO metadata and the theme metadata, theme data stored in it, or do you want two hashes? Ah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, two hashes might be not everybody will have a theme. Well, I guess we could they could have they have the default theme, I guess, by default. So I guess there will be a theme. But uh but it is a thing that only some people will have. You could randomly assign people themes, and then if you want to change it, you need a boost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. If you want to update it, you got to pay. You get the ugly first. Yeah, rando colors, ran randomly generated. Well, if we were going to separate them, I, I feel like we would probably want to have another key here. Um, um, theme hash. Yes. Yeah, but it could be a theme. It could also, another one might be, uh, um, what, like a manifesto? But would that maybe, would that go up into just the DAO metadata, or do you think we want to have something separate? Yeah, that's an interesting bit. Manifesto could be multiple bits. I kind of feel like the pattern is becoming like, if manifesto, then it has its own little format. If theme, then it has its own little format. Uh, whereas the DAO metadata is all like global and required, I suppose. And then there are like these optional parameters based on if they have these things, like a manifesto or a theme or a website or whatever. Yeah, so I'm, think, I'm thinking one uh, top level metadata hash, and inside that, one of the keys could be theme. And it, if it's empty, we just pull a, a default theme. But if it's not empty, then we pull the theme that's existing. What do you think? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, totally. And then that theme hash would just have to link to another uh, set of data, I guess. Yes. Which is, oh, that's and that's what the hash would return. So yeah, that yes. would make sense. Yeah, that'd be sweet. That's like pretty extensive. Yeah, I think the key is they make it like extendable, you know, so you can keep adding more things later. I think that's pretty extendable. Yeah, it become like it's basically linked to other. And that's what IPLD is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just have one top level, and then all these things will just be default to something at first, and then can be modified later. So these are like. Sub. Mm, yeah, sub. Yeah, manifesto sub. Yeah. Yeah, those are, yeah, those are cool. What other th what other cool metadata? Uh, what yeah. What else is there? There's like the. This I mean, there's like cool you could do, but but yeah, certainly this is a great start. Yeah, yeah. It, this could be multiple files, right? So, like, right, yeah, mm -hmm. could be. Or do we want to handle an array of hashes where we're like updating one of the hashes though, and not the others? That, I mean, eventually, I yeah. like the idea of it just being one, one JSON blob up on IPFS that can have however many keys of stuff. Yeah, when you're updating it, you just have to make sure that you keep the other data, the existing data the same, and then update only the things. So you get a new hash, which you'll just store on in a, new, in a proposal. OK. Yeah, that's a good so if we wanted to add some more, when we update it, that would be OK. Like if we wanted to add manifesto a, like 1A, and then manifesto 2A, or whatever. We could add some extra keys. Does that make sense? 
I mean, extra key is it's, it's up to the. I mean, on the UI, we can't really ask uh, let people add like, maybe extra keys. I mean, if they want to, they can add it, but we we won't be using that to display or anywhere, right? Yeah. I'm, we kind of need some kind of standard around that for the front end. Yeah, we'll just have some standard things like the the top level we, we should always have name, description, purpose, avatar, website. Rest of it is uh, is optional. If it, if it exists in the IPFS hash, then then we'll pull it from there, or else we have a default uh, object for either of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Any other things that we want right now? MOA. That's an operating agreement. Um, yeah, I think then we can just add more later. These are probably good for now. Yeah, if we, if we find them, like build the whole mechanism, then we can add these things always later. So if we we're going to implement this. Then does that seem like a, a place like we should have a link in here? Yeah. So so what happens now with these existing proposal types? They send different detail JSON JSONs, right? So we'll have to edit those and also update the UI for those things. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think we, it would have a different UI. I don't know how deep we want to go into this for this bounty. I mean, if we're going to do it, let's do it in a clean manner. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to what was your, what was the question? To like, what would be the interaction like to update the data? I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, I wonder. I mean, it it could totally be moved into a proposal type. Um. Uh. Definitely could. There's definitely some UX thinking that would need to be done around that, though, because there's definitely a lot of data. It's I guess it's like a new form that collects that's collecting different data. I guess from an architecture standpoint, that does make the most sense, though. Uh, I think there's some UX that could be Im improved around that, but the I think the architecture of that sounds right, like a new yeah. proposal type, which means that it would have the op it would have the opportunity to select the fields that we're requesting out of this JSON blob, right? Um, and then they can update those. So that does sound like good architecture. Yeah, and if there's already an existing metadata, we just have to pull that and display that anyway so the user can edit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe that we can hit cool. the form. That could dis oh, sorry. Oh, the form could kind of display the current values in the current current JSON. You could select to edit one, or you could add a new property. Yeah, like another another way to think about it could just be like another page. Like if you hit back, then we just have like a, a you know like an admin page or something. I mean, it's a DAO, so anybody who has a share is an admin. Um, so uh, we could have like have all those values displayed on like a page, basically for now. And then uh, when you, if you were to edit those and submit, then it would auto submit a proposal. That would be like another way to do it, which would feel more like an actual. That's what you would do in a normal UI if you weren't trying to like force it into a DAO. I think. Yeah, right. I think that that makes more sense for sure. And it might be easier to, to build with right now during a hackathon, and then like uh, later, uh, you know, we can kind of go through like the UX stuff, and like maybe it does make sense here or not, but. Maybe it'd be easier to work from that idea also. So do you think we would just add that to this uh, navigation menu up here on the right? Yeah, that's a, that'd be a great start. Yeah, totally. So what, like, what did we call it? Yeah, what do we want to call it? Um, <laughs> admin's kind of funny because it's like not a thing that really exists in a decentralized world. Um, but it's a shared admin in this in this in this uh, environment. So, would um, it be settings? Yeah, I mean settings, I guess. Um, but it's not settings exactly. We're looking at the metadata of the of the DAO. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, I wonder. I don't know. Dow can... profile or something? Yeah, I was yeah. thinking something like that too. Like, What happens in account? Like, what is there in account? That's your personal account information, like how many shares you have and, uh, and what your internal balances and things. And right. Yeah, yeah. And your ability to rage quit uh, up there in actions. It could just say DAO. I don't know. Yeah, just something think- like DAO. DAO profile makes the most contextual sense so far. Yeah, um, DAO profile. It's just text mm-hmm. we can upload later. But I think. Uh, so you click on DAO profile. It's, Where's DAO data? Maybe. It's going to look DAO at. Data. Proposals members account. Look, it'll look. Like, you could have like, one more tab. Right you could have What's, one more tab in the bottom also. I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah, well, we can do with that later. I'd just drop it up in that one up there to limit the impact on the interface currently because it'll just create work that's not necessary right now. Yeah. Dropping a little link up there is like super easy. Yeah. Okay, so just a link here that that's going to open a new page that'll have all the current settings and then an option to like edit those settings. Yeah, it be, I think, yeah, like the simplest way to think about that, it would just be like the form with the, it would just be like as if you had hit the proposal type and were exposed with the form. Um, it's basically that. It's all the data and all the form fields, you know, all the different that are returned from the JSON blob and all the values that currently exist. You can go through and change all of those, uh, every one of them, I guess, that are that are changeable. Um, and then whenever, and then at that point, you can just hit like save or something like, uh, uh, where, well, yeah, um, I guess that would be like the expected behavior is like, oh, okay, I'm updating this page. And then I hit save. I'm going to save this data, you know, uh, but to save the data, it has to trigger a proposal. So something like yeah. that, like submit proposal to change or, or something like that. Could yeah. Be. And then that proposal would be just. Basically, uh, you know, the applicant really doesn't matter, but it'd probably be the sender. Um, zero shares requested, zero loot. Uh, tribute offered. So, th- Ooh, yeah, that's true. You so, that, there. so that would be zero. Tribute token just needs to be a whitelisted token, so it's like the main deposit token. You just need to have a whitelisted token in here and in here. Those, those all come with the DAO, though, right? So those those can just be like all pre-populated. Yeah. And yeah. Then, if, probably. if you look at like our current forms, um, proposal forms, it should have a way to do it. I think um, this is really the only field we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Everything else, we want to just default to the zero value. So there we go. JSON stringified and put it there. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a string. It doesn't need to be encoded or anything. And it's extra. I guess it gets encoded anyways. But um, So we just passed in the, the JSON string here. And uh, then the to actually get the data, we should be able to use the subgraph. On the front end, uh, let's see. Um, yeah. yeah, the graph should be like a big help here, for sure. You like the first. So you can see some of these are uh, just okay. totally random because there wasn't really a standard. But if we're going to go to the standard now, then we would just do what we wrote. And so, yeah, it's just a stringified JSON. 
thing. So uh, someone was saying that we could add it as, uh, like I don't know how this graph works, but we we can't be passing through all of these every time, right? Like, could we add a a thing to be able to query just these types of? Yeah, what we'd have to do is try to parse that detail string in the mapping and add a new field. That hmm. uh, so that would be in the graph code. That'll be so good to work. Okay, that can be done. Maybe initially we would just you know you just grab. In our code, we have a, we have the proposals all available in the Apollo store, right? So we can just grab the proposals and then uh, locally just JavaScript filter out the ones that have this. Um... Yeah, that that'll be the thing to start with. Just pull all proposals and find the newest one, the highest index past proposal with that type. And we can work towards a better query eventually, so there's less JavaScript you have to do. Yeah. OK. And then, then we get the latest one. We get the IPFS hash. We go pull that data down, and then we just parse through that, basically to fill in our form. Yeah. OK. That sounds really cool. Um, I think that would be awesome. Yes. Is, is, uh, so do you guys, are there people who want to work on this together? Or do you guys want to like chunk this out into different bits? Or is there any other ideas on some some things that while we're all on, we could talk about. So I wanted to work on this. Not sure. Uh, like San Diego also was thinking he wanted to work with me. San Diego, are you still interested? But this, yeah. Are you there, San Diego? Might be having some problems with your mic. If you want to chat in general discussion, uh, maybe that's the way to resolve it. I know there was one other person to uh, heavy hitter. I think it was. I can't remember. It's <laughs> a great username. <laughs> what was his name? Yeah, something like that. So, oh, uh, Santiago's unmuted now. He was unmuted at that time also. I, I guess you can't hear oh. him. Right. Uh, heavy Chain, that was the username. Yeah. He, um, but, so yeah, how would you suggest like breaking it up in nice chunks for people, Deacon, so they can like get started? Well, um, I was thinking that... I mean, there's kind of a lot of markup and form work, I guess with uh these different things the theme well i don't know i guess it's all kind of there yeah um, i don't know we can start hacking and, and then we can see like uh, whenever santiago comes we can talk to him and then we can figure it out yeah what were did, Vin, do you have the link to the other bounties we had do you remember what they were Oh, they're pinned in the channel. Oh. Uh, for the short list, um, and there's yeah, that's like the quick hit list. They're they're also on Gitcoin, obviously. When you go to claim, but I can drop it in here if you want to pull it up or something. Hey, and can you drop this HackMD link in general chat? General discussion. Over oh, general discussion. Yeah. Or or in in Dahos actually. Oh, right, right, right. So I think this was kind of cool just to 
to go through one use case. Um, we're actually not even using the minion here, though. Um, so there's definitely some other bounties here that may um, use the minion more. Um, this one about minting or, or sending NFTs to new members. Uh, again, it, it would probably be an NFT contract that has an option for, for only members to mint something or to request minting to an address that isn't a member would require uh, a minion proposal. That's one idea. But yeah, I wonder how else you're gonna handle that. <clears throat> Just a programmatic. Maybe it would be something on here where you have another tab that's like your your member benefits, and you could come in and grab some of your loot of like different NFTs that you get for being a member, or maybe you could propose another NFT that all members could get. I don't know. That could be fun. Yeah, I really like the welcome kit idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's an, and there's also the ENS stuff that would fit well in a welcome, welcome kit. I like claim your, your ENS. Uh, well, let's just look at the minion interface because this is another place where I think we could do some different things. What the? I have a cash problem with this site. I think the service worker is messed up. But we have this idea over here of forge tools. Um, there's ENS in here right now, but I think we could add some other things like uh, NFT gallery or something. Yeah, so how does one make a forge tool? Um, so yeah, the, like basically, let me just see if I can get this to work first. It's kind of like an existing thing that we already used to do, just to yeah. up, you know, it's like, they threw a lot more compute power to these companies to process it. Gaylor, your audio is spilling <laughs> over. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh. I think you're watching uh, the meta chili uh, <laughs> media thing, right? I know. Shoot, I I'm didn't gonna... unmute myself though. <laughs> oh, I unmuted you because I oh, actually okay. ever muted you before. Yeah. Got so. it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hello. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> huh. Well, if anyone knows how view service workers work and fix this stupid problem. Um, anyway, so there's two options here, like just submitting a proposal, and we just have a list of a bunch of ABIs. It's the same idea, but basically it'd be like taking one of these ABIs and being, OK, instead of just having uh, this kind of ABI decoder thing and a bunch of forms, fields to fill, up, fill out, in some cases, a more dedicated interface makes more sense, like with this is the ENS, and so we wanted to have a list of, of registered ENS names or subdomains um, and like a way to pick and things like that. So we just made a dedicated UI. So I think it would be the same thing like if we were talking about an NFT gallery. 
it would be like a gallery that shows all the NFTs that the minion owns and, uh, uh, you know, which would even could be just something like the open sea in bed. Uh, where they have like, you can embed different, uh, oh, cool. I got a Lex dragon. Um, you could em- embed one of their gal, one of their markets into the minion. And then the main interactions that you would want to have in them in the minion is, uh, pulling out the money or it from sales or minting more or something like that. And so for those API things, um, how do you create those then? Cause it seems like they're kind of the same thing, just a slightly different interface, but how do you actually create them in the first place? Um, so the, there's a few ways to get an API. If you have a register, let's see. So here's our deployed DAO that we just deployed. So we can go over to Etherscan. So this would be like if you knew a contract that you wanted to interact with um, through the minion and you wanted to get the ABI and you don't have um, all the tooling for local contract development, you can just come over here and go to contract. And here's your ABI. Um, and then in the repo, you would you just add, we have a, a folder of, of all the ABIs, and you just add it and add it to the dropdown. And then the decoder will fill out the rest of, will build the form for you. Um, cool. So pretty much people just need to go find the ABIs they want and submit a PR to the repo? Yeah. Yep. I'll show you that. That's over here. So everything's mainly in the raid guild. Uh, well, the the Dow House and Pokemon repos are going to be in uh, the Odyssey organization. Which did you post those, Sam? Links to those? Yeah, they're in the channel. Okay, cool. So it's in in this view app and oh, somewhere in here. So here's our actual this is like our drop downs here, so you just come put them up a new one in here, and all of our all the ABIs we're just throwing in here to SRC ABI, and that should be enough just to to like build up that form builder. But then you're right, the Forge tools would be more of a dedicated UI for, for something where the form builder isn't quite enough or not very cool. But uh, does anyone else have any um, questions about any of these bounties or any ideas or need to find a team or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, just barely, yeah. really quiet. Yeah, my audio is very low. Sorry about that. So I've been kicking around this idea with uh, Burata actually about the possibility of embedding a CLR contract into the minion. Yeah, I mean that would be really cool. Um, are you? I saw you guys mention like the Macy or Mackie. I'm not sure how, how they say it, but uh, um, I know that the CLR fund project's working on that, and it's actually fairly complicated. Right. But it, it does seem like it would be a, a really cool use case. 
Um, I'm trying to think how it would work. So the minion submits a proposal about, or, or what are you guys thinking? Uh, well, you know, there's many different angles to it because one angle would be to have this as an agreement between DAOs, like an inter-DAO agreement that if Alice DAO pays out um, X amount to, to fund its proposal, then um, Bob DAO could follow that uh, with, could match that. that Man, you're so quiet. I can barely hear you. So one one possible oh, use good. case, yeah. Sorry, one possible use case would be for um, the for one DAO to mirror another DAO to match another DAO's um, proposals. Uh huh. So let's say that Alice DAO is is funding X project, and Bob DAO uh, could agree to mirror that and to match. To match those donations, huh. that would be one way, and the other way would, of course, be like a like a Gitcoin CLR, but the sponsors are DAOs, and it's all done uh, on chain. I like that mirroring idea. Um... Yeah. So the way we're thinking about the mirroring idea actually is that let's say that we have a, a smaller DAO that has a really kind of um, they have an in depth knowledge about a certain field, let's say the legal field, for example. And, but they don't have that much funds in their guild bank. So with this uh, CLR minion, what could happen is that bigger DAOs or like an association of DAOs can all say, yeah, it's a great idea for the ecosystem if we all match Lex DAOs um, pro sponsorships or proposals with a certain amount. So we allow Lex DAO to do the deciding and the voting um yeah i don't i don't know how much of this is possible because i don't know that much about the minion yeah i think the, let's see that would so would the smaller DAO be voting on a proposal as well or they're just they're uh, let, let's say let's say that it's lex DAO. so lex DAO is voting on proposals to support legal research projects but let's say Moloch DAO has agreed to let Lex DAO take the lead on the, on that in that field. So it's um, it it has this minion CLR thing, whereby it matches Lex DAO's um, what Lex DAO is voting on basically with a certain amount. So what you could do is it, this would be like another kind of modified minion the initial the the Moloch in this case which Moloch is a v1 but uh, Moloch DAO that is <clears throat> but so the minions aren't really set up for that but just just let's say they're the v2 and um so they someone would submit a proposal through the minion at this so at the same time that that's that minions creating a po proposal on the Moloch DAO it would also create a matching proposal on this other DAO. It would still need to be um, sponsored by each DAO respectively and voted on, but it would be it would automate that step a little bit and just saying like you guys committed to to matching. So when we submit this, we're also going to submit it to the other DAO or the five other DAOs or whatever, and. Um, then the, those each of those DAOs would then have to go through the normal process of the proposal. So they'd still have to vote for the funds to leave the guild bank. Yeah. So uh, to for funds to ever leave the guild bank, there has to be a proposal. Now, I guess what you could do. is the DAO could set up like a vault of money that's kind of outside of their guild bank and have it approved to the minion on another DAO. And so when uh, a proposal passes on that DAO and then the proposal is executed, it would go pull from these vaults that were 
probably were just funded by those other DAOs. That could probably work. Yeah, that's definitely where it could work. And the 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 public funding thing is an interesting. Up here, quiet again. Oh, uh, yeah. The the public CLR is another interesting aspect too, in the sense that there could be hackathons or grant rounds that and the sponsors are DAOs. And they could opt into that via this uh, CLR minion. So, yeah, but I guess that in all cases, what you're telling me is that what what the dependency is here is that there needs to be like um, a, a separate pool of funds that those DAOs are allocating towards that. Yeah. So I think, well, like, yeah, they could just like having a separate. You could have a separate. Um, bank outside of the DAO that is owned by the DAO's minion, which uh, that bank would be isolated from the DAO's like rage quitting and stuff like that, <clears throat> but it would still only be able to be managed by DAO proposals. So um, adding funds or removing funds would have to happen through a proposal. So I think it still kind of fits inside of the DAO ideology. But it removes rage quit. Well, with that, isn't the idea that the main DAO would take funds from the main guild bank, which are rage quitable, put them in the minion, ergo no longer rage quitable, and the minion would then put them into a CLR type contract uh, that has a few different projects that are whitelisted and approved, and based on how many people contribute to that project, then the CLR thing would dump it out, and the minion would just have the control on that which would be controlled by the DAO vote. Yeah, through a DAO vote, right. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like it might work. Yeah, I mean, it's really flexible. There's a lot of different things that could happen. Um, we're getting a little over time now, but I think... Uh, is it like maybe we could use a few minutes for team building if anyone is looking for a team or has something else they want to do? Also, you can use these forum chat or the Discord channels to uh, try to get some stuff going. Yeah, I would say let's open up the floor to discussion. Um, team building. If anyone has a project they want to pitch, just grab grab the floor and start talking about it. in the same tone if uh, people have certain uh, skill sets they want to bring to another team, you're welcome to shield yourself. If anyone's working on a DAO uh, and wants help with the design, let me know. I like DAOs. I like designing things. So, uh, yeah, more on the mechanism design standpoint than, like, illustrations, but those are cool, too. Uh, so, yeah, DAOs are cool. <laughs> cool this was a great talk guys um hopefully it was helpful a little bit um i think walking through an example with uh with dan was probably good to see how some of the down mechanics work um and then with the minion stuff if anyone gets some ideas, just definitely post them. I think I'm going to go grab some lunch. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Cheers. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, Deacon. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Bye. Um, I see you're here as Bilbao. Do you want to take a moment and talk a little bit about Trini Dow and what you're looking for? I uh, can't hear you if you're talking. Okay, well, uh, thanks everyone for attending and I uh, look forward to seeing you async. If you need anything, feel free to uh, reach out to me and anyone else who has a helper tag in their role. And we'll see you for the next one. Yay. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys.